<laughs> All right, let's say the first one uh, has, let's say, a brain tumour. The second one has a brain tumour. The third one has a brain tumour, right? Now, you pray for the first one and he dies. Sorry. <laughs> okay? <laughs> right? <laughs> now, your mind can say, well, I haven't got the gift of healing. You know, my faith is just not up to this. Right? Okay? Then you pray for the second one and there's a little bit of improvement. Oh, I'm feeling a bit better. The brain tumour shrunk in the scan, but it's still there. Right? Then you come to the third one. Bang! Power God hits her and the brain tumor is gone. <laughs> right? Your faith was being strengthened through the first one who died. <laughs> Amen? That's right. Amen? The first one wasn't a failure, he was just your testing. <laughs> okay? All right. Um, so, you know, sometimes you have faith, but not sufficient faith for the thing that is standing before you. So we grow in our faith. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bless you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And sometimes we, people can think, and often this happens, well, I've got a problem, so, and God's not fixing my problem, so I've sinned in my life. I'm cursed. God doesn't love me. He's distant from me. All these sort of thoughts that the enemy will put into your head. Well, what does Paul say? Because apparently Paul got sick. Paul was... Uh, apparently naked, uh, almost drowning in the sea. He was flogged uh, 39 with 39 stripes three times. Um, he went hungry. He was in prison with chains. And what does he say? He says, I rejoice in my infirmities, in my reproaches. Reproaches is, uh, you know, the shame of you know, being in prison, my reproaches, my persecutions, my problems. He, he wasn't ashamed of his life. No. He was rejoicing in it. You are still the friend of God in your suffering. Amen? It's just that suffering and problems like nothing else, perhaps, will purify your faith in Christ. Amen? Now, faith, we said this before, faith sees Jesus. Alright, you with me? Faith perceives Jesus. Okay, um, but what do you see in the world? Do you see, uh, are you confronted with poverty? I see the provider. Are you confronted with sickness? I see the healer. Are you confronted with demons? I see the might of Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, let's go on a little bit more. What if what you see is comfort? You're not going to get it. What if what you see is luxury? All right? Australia is one of the most prospered nations on planet Earth. Most people live within 50 kilometers of the beach. <laughs> Right? And we are surrounded by comforts. We got more and more shopping malls. More and more comforts. Right? And, and I, was, I saw an ad, you know, about compensation lawyers. You know, we, we want to be comfortable in all things. So if you have an accident, you can sue and you can be comfortable. Right? If, you, if you're in hospital, we'll give you lots of endone tablets to keep you on a sort of a, a hallucinating <laughs> high. You know, we don't want any suffering. We want to be comfortable. And with the comfort, they add sin. The culture here in Australia is comfort 
luxury, the acquisition of money with sin. Now let's have a look at the life of Moses in, this is amazing. Everyone say amazing. amazing. Hebrews 11.24, it says, by faith, everyone say, by faith. by faith. Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh was regarded as a god. And he was the greatest ruler in the ancient Near East, right, at the time of Moses. Had a huge empire, very rich man. By faith, Moses refused to be called Pharaoh's daughter's son. Why? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Esteeming, that means holding high the reproach or the shame of Christ. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Faith sees the invisible God who is Christ Jesus and looks beyond the pleasures of sin, looks beyond the comforts of his life, says, I want my greater reward. You know, the devil comes along and says, you know, you can have this, you can have that. This nice woman, although she's married, you can have this, you can have that. You, you hear what I'm saying? And you look above all that and you see Jesus. One day you will meet him. One day he will reward you. That is your faith. Amen. Amen. The passing pleasures of this life, the sin, you know, the running after superannuation, running after money, running after acquisition, running after holidays, whatever it is. But I, we have something greater. We have Jesus. We have a greater reward. One day, all of this will pass. You know, I never thought I'd be 52. <laughs> 50 years have passed. I mean, look, any of us over 50, did you think you'd be here today? I mean, when you were 15, you'd always be 15, Johnny. <laughs> huh? But it happens. It happens. This life is gone. Blink of an eye. You know, those who win souls are like the stars that shine in the heavens. <laughs> Amen? Why not shine like a star for all of eternity rather than choose the passing pleasures of this life? Why not choose like Moses to suffer with Christ rather than live, live up the good life in Pharaoh's household? Amen? Amen? When you choose Christ, you choose something far greater. You choose an eternal reward. Amen? Amen? Oh, hallelujah. I mean, you walk with Christ, you, you will walk in suffering. You know, people talk about, you know, being in the glory of God, the anointing, signs and wonders and so on. <laughs> and there's a verse that's not all, often quoted, that when you suffer persecution, be assured that the spirit of glory rests upon you. <laughs> Amen? You know, we choose Christ. Faith says, I see Christ. Amen. I'm following him. I'm not doing what the rest of the world's doing. I was in, uh, uh, you want to hear a story? I went to the largest church building I have ever visited about two weeks ago in a place called Semarang in central Java, Indonesia. And... Uh, um, on the, the, you know, above the door, when you, you come in, you know what it says above the door? It says, Holy Stadium. 
gives you an idea how big the place is. I walked in and uh, I think they said that it had 15,000 seats. And the congregation is 50,000 people. And uh, I, I just had to go down the front, you know. I didn't dare, you know, like get caught, but <laughs> I didn't dare stand in front of the pulpit. But just, uh, I stood in front of the pulpit, you know, and looked at all the empty seats and just imagined preaching, you know, to 15,000 people. Be awesome, eh? The pastor, um, the translators were telling me, uh, Shirley and the husband were telling me that before the building was built, when he had about 3,000 people, um, the Lord said to him, uh, go down to the main street and lift your hands all day and praise me. So he stood on the main street, you know, where all the traffic are going, you know, like a policeman, and stood worshipping God. And, you know, I can imagine people thought he was a fool. But today he's got 50,000 people in the church. He, he, he saw something beyond the reproach, beyond the shame. His, he, his eyes perceived Christ. And, if, you know, in the middle of town, he lifts his hands and worships and prays in front of all the people, you know. He, he, he chose something greater than reputation. He chose Christ. And the way of Christ is always a higher level. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. What are you choosing today? What are you choosing? You know, it's, it's the little choices in life. It's the little choices in life. It's like, um, you know, you're down at, at Coles. Do you have Coles here? I th we saw Coles. You're down at Coles at the checkout, you know, and God's not asking you to go to to India to preach but he says turn around to the lady behind you and say hello mm -hmm. oh Lord I could not do that mm -hmm. he says go on what will you do will you see Christ and believe in him and say hello you know what will you do it, it's the little choices in life you turn around and you say hello and you start talking, and the person says, I just despair of life. I don't know what to do. And you say, I know someone who can help you. He helped me a lot. Can I introduce you to him? What's his name? Jesus. Oh, I'd love to have him. And the person receives Christ in the queue. Amen? All because you chose Christ rather than your reputation. Faith sees him. You know, faith and obedience are the same. The obedience of faith. When there's no such thing as faith without repentance. Right? When you come to Christ in faith, putting your faith to him as saviour, you will have to repent. It's the fruit of faith. Obedience and faith go hand in hand. Jesus says, come follow me. If you believe in him, you'll obey him. And you'll follow him. Amen? Obedience and faith. Well, we're going to turn to, again to Hebrews. And uh, we're going to look at uh, Hebrews 11 verse 7. By faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen. So God's warning him about things that are coming. He hasn't seen them yet. Moved with godly fear. You know, that, that's what's lacking in the church, yes. is that sense that God is real. I shall give account to him. I better respect his word. Amen? Moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household 
by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Verse 8. By faith Abraham obeyed. Everyone say obeyed. obeyed. When he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. Oh, come on, just imagine. Can I use you as an example? Is that all right? Yeah, would you like to stand? Yeah. All right, just imagine. You know, uh, do you have a house? Yeah. <laughs> you have a house, all right? Are you comfortable in your house? Oh, reasonably. Reasonably comfortable in your house. Anyone else living in your house? Yeah, me six, five kids. Five kids. Wow. Almost six. <laughs> Almost six. God bless you. <laughs> and the Lord says to you, I want you to leave your house, take your five kids and go to a place where you do not know where you're going. I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a challenge, huh? Mm. Yeah, thank you. It would be. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> I mean, imagine the faith you'd need. Lord, where am I going? Lord, I've got five and one on the way. Right? And Abraham, he went out. Faith and obedience are the same thing. When God says to do something, be sure it will require faith. <laughs> Amen? And probably endurance. He went out not knowing where he was going. And Abraham is the father of all who believe. Amen? 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 The blessings of God are only accessed by faith. Yes. If you're not walking by faith, where are the blessings of God? Every step of faith that you take, the grace of God will be on your life. Stop walking by faith and sit in comfort, sit in the blessing and you'll cease to walk with Christ. To walk with Christ is to walk by faith. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. God speaking to us today? Yes. The life of faith. The life of faith. I was... Um, you know, true prophecy is amazing. I was talking to the pastor last night and I was talking about a wave. I saw a wave and he said... Recently I went to a conference and I had a vision of this wave. And uh, then I spoke to his wife and I said, um, uh, behind you is a wilderness. Your life past is like a wilderness and you've been wandering in the wilderness. And the Lord says, do not look back because the enemy will intimidate you. But look forward, I have a straight path for you. Amen? So... If you look back on your past, the things that have happened to you in your past, the devil will try to intimidate you, put shame on you, guilt on you, you're a failure, blah, 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 blah. We should never look backwards. Jesus said that it, when you put your hand to the plough and look back, you're not worthy of the kingdom of God. So we keep looking forward. Amen? You keep ploughing. Jesus always walks straight. Always look to him. Keep going. Amen? Praise God. Final thing I want to say is the enemy of your faith is discouragement. The enemy of your faith is discouragement. Consider Jesus, it says in Hebrews 12.3, Consider Jesus. Everyone say, consider Jesus. Jesus. Lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. That verse talks about consider Jesus and then talks about what Jesus suffered on the cross. Let's have a look at it. <clears throat> For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul, for you have not yet resisted the bloodshed striving against sin. I mean, you look at Jesus and the persecution and the suffering that he endured on the cross. He's the author and perfecter of our faith. 
Why do we think that we will not suffer if our Saviour suffered? The Bible says that we are partakers of the sufferings of Christ. Consider him, lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul. When a person becomes wearied, they become tired spiritually and they become discouraged. It, if they're not careful, it becomes a root. It takes root in their life. I was talking to a, a pastor and uh, talking about miracles. And he said to me, this is a Pentecostal pastor. He says to me, I'm a skeptic. I'm a skeptic. When I was a child, I prayed for my sister and she died of cancer. I'm a skeptic. So he allowed, instead of that situation becoming purifying and strengthening his faith so that he could you know, lay hands on, on people with cancers and see them healed. Instead of allowing that to strengthen his faith, he allowed the enemy to bring weariness, discouragement through that event into his life. And it took root and became doubt, skepticism. So you pray for 50 things and five things you see answered right now, right? You can either become discouraged about the 45 things or you can rejoice in the five things and give thanks for the 45 things because your faith was being strengthened. We can either focus on the past failures or we can focus on the blessings the answers to prayer in the past. You can set up like a filing system, like a lawyer has a, 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 a case history. You can set up a case history of failures to convince yourself that faith doesn't work and become discouraged in your soul. Or you can leave those things with God, the apparent failures, and you can focus on the good things that he has done. And remember, all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Especially suffering and problems are allowed by God to draw you closer to him. They are eventually for your good. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for speaking to us this morning. Thank you, Father.